Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nate's Garage and Bakery. We're going to build this 3D printer, this HIC Technologies 3D P11 printer, and uh, we're going to end up at some point with a finished base frame. Out of these parts here, we're going to make us a rectangular type of dealie like this with little rubber feet and everything. So let's get started, shall we? We're putting together our little 3D printer up in here. That's the dude right there. Prusa i3. All that stuff from the Hick Top Technology Company Limited. I am going to try to do this all with the included tool set. Which is this little uh, wrench and these uh, two little miniature screwdrivers and this pair of dikes here and this little set of hex keys. Although I do have my own arsenal of such things as measuring devices and other such tools to make sure that this thing turns out straight, usable, you know. And I won't claim that I use only the best. That right there is Harbor Freight in all of its glory. Though I did confirm with this here roofer square that this at least in its current state actually is square so there you have it well, what i have here is a couple things out to uh start off with our instructions over there let me uh mount mr camera my camera face in the uh thing here check out my field of view hi first thing it tells you to do is basically put the base frame together using two of the long pieces and two of the shorter pieces which are the 410s and the 308s so the uh, long ones are the 410s and the 308s are the medium ones these are the ones that actually measured out favorably the 295s actually measured out about two and a half millimeters too short compared to what it said on the sheet so hopefully that's not a problem but uh, here's our 410s Here's our 308s, and what we're going to do is put this together in such a fashion as this. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use these little clips right here to fasten them together in the corners. Make sure I'm actually in the frame here, this whole thing, in the corners like so and we're going to do that using not only those brackets but oh this is the most spread out user manual ever they have like one picture per page of a screw so we're going to use these uh m5 by 8 to uh put this thing on here so the m5 by 8s uh, M5 by 8 there's the whole package of our M5 by 8 and we're using the M5 nuts, which are these little uh, interestingly shaped things that actually fit within the rails of the extruded aluminium, as they say in proper Queen's English. So we need 2, 4, 6, 8 of these. So, 2, 4, 6, 8. Who do we appreciate? Jamil. Come on, something, something, but my death. And we'll get eight of these out. Four, eight. Ta da! Now, it says in the manual something Chinese with arrows. What I'm trying to figure out is exactly what it means. I think what it means is that maybe perhaps the easiest way to do this is to, you know, like you have to turn it around so it's that side. Come on, Nate. What you have to do maybe is, um, 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 uh, maybe, uh, this is kind of like Unistrut. If you've ever played with Unistrut, these little T-nuts down in here, and the way the channel looks for these things, what's kind of nice I guess we'll see if it actually works. 
What's kind of nice is uh, they don't get any washers, so these are kind of just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, what, whatever, okay. These are obviously the most accurately casted whatever the hell these things are ever with perfectly flat smooth spaces on the mating things there not shouldn't matter but what we're going to do is put that through there and screw one of these on oh i'm all thumbs right now aren't i put that through there holy mother all right so put that through there and then screw one of these on. And then the way Unistrut works, and I'm hoping the way these work, is that uh, you can line this up to where it slips through the slot, like so. And then when you actually go to tighten this, with, let's see here, looks like maybe that one. When you go to tighten this, it actually turns itself the right way in the channel there. So, ta-da, tight. Nice, huh? Isn't that slicker and snot in the doorknob? Yeah, the way these things are tapered or something, they allow it to turn. So you slipped it in there and it turned. And then it stopped right there while you tighten it in. So, oops. Well, when I loosen it, apparently it undid itself. But you can see in there, I have no idea if this thing's actually focusing or actually point in the right way or anything, but uh, as long as it's loose enough, oh man, you're going to make a liar out of me, you piece of crap. Well, I guess the, the trick here is to make sure it actually gets in there right. So there we go with that one. We'll do the same thing over here. I don't know exactly where those need to be yet, so I'm uh <clears throat> kind of waiting to tighten them all the way down until I know where they're supposed to be. Same thing over here where you put a, put a bolt through, or a screw, or whatever you want to call those things. A cap screw, I suppose, is the technical proper term. And then, um... That is not how it goes, Nate. Come on. And then, um... We'll just uh, make sure that's lined up there, and we'll slip it through like so, and then we'll tighten that murder further down. Now, I kind of have a feeling this one did not grab. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a little bit of a struggle here on how to get these in there so that they're just so the long rails are supposed to go butt up against the short rails not the other way around so the long rails butt up on the short rails butt up tighten i'm not going to over torque these i hope loosen that just enough so it slides a little bit and then i'm going to this way down on my really flat table yeah right it's all old particle board under here hopefully my sheet is a good filler for crappy surface all right so nice and tight there nice and tight there and Well, the Chinese square says the Chinese is square, so uh, I don't know about that. I want to measure it once I get it all together. It's, uh, it's actually a little bit out there. I'm going to go ahead and put it all together, this uh, bottom square here, and then measure it and or adjust it. So uh, maybe I'll fast forward through this part of the video. but.
all the T nuts seem to be rotated in the correct direction. So what we have here is our frame. Now what I'm going to do, one of the ways you can make sure something is square, is to measure from one side to the other. I'm going to start at the one mark here. Now this isn't the most accurate ruler because it's marked in freaking sixteenths of an inch, but uh, it is long enough at the very least. So what we got here, I'm going to have to uh, concentrate on this here or something. We got in this direction is... 21 and a half. 21 and a half. Now we measure the other diagonal. It actually said 22 and a half, by the way, but since I'm starting on the one, I subtracted that one. That's 20. Okay, so there's the one. That is also 22 and a half on the nose. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a square rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down to about 36.2 foot pounds. No idea how tight I'm getting these, but uh, you know, I've worked on a lot of cars in my life and I just kind of go by feel. Feels tight enough. If anything, I tend to over tighten things a little bit, but uh, there are no torque specs on these, so what's the saying? Tighten it till it cracks, back it off half a turn, something like that. So, step one complete. We have our nice Square frame, little nice, even, evenly, whatever, right onto the thingamab thingies and the stuff is in the fingers. So there we go. Step two. Get you some of these right here and start putting them on. So that's what we'll do. We're using M5 by 12s for these, which I believe are the same things we just used. We need four of them, and these nuts right here. Same deal. These are going to attach into the corners on these frame slots here. So what you're going to want to do put these on down through there like a sole. Put it on down in there. I'm going to scoot it up as far as I can. Put it on down in there and uh, yeah baby. Now these being rubber they're going to compress the more you screw that thing down so really as long as it's tight it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Went right in there. Ta-da! Well, that's it for this episode on Nate's Garage and Bakery. Did you get this far? Did you like what you saw? Go ahead on and click that subscribe button for future videos. Hell, click the like button while you're at it. Leave a comment if you got questions. I'll try to answer them. Later.